Hey guys, it's your sick uncle here. We're back with some more Modern Warfare 2. I'm still not feeling the best, but you guys keep me going. And there's just so much weird stuff going on with Modern Warfare 2, Warzone 2, and DMZ that I just, I had to make a video anyway. I feel like Infinity Ward has some explaining to do and they just don't want to do it. At this point in the game, it kind of just feels like there's secrets being kept from us and they just don't want to be transparent enough to explain what's going on with the game and some of the design changes that they've been making over time. I feel like it's most likely to avoid backlash and I can kind of understand where they're coming from because we are a relentless community. If we don't like shit in this game, we will make it way more than known. Expect endless tangents for years to come. I mean, I think skill-based matchmaking is a prime example of that, although that's not exactly what I want to talk about today. The gameplay you'll be seeing in the background is me going for long shots. Yay. The first thing I'd like to talk about is the M13B. There's actually a secret variant of the M13B called the Chimera that is in the game, but we don't have access to it. The description for the gun says, with an integrated suppressor and slow high energy subsonic 300 BLK rounds, the Chimera is adept at close quarters combat. Subsonic ammo hides kill skulls from the enemy team. Now we do already know that this upcoming gun is essentially the honey badger from Call of Duty Ghost, but we don't know exactly when it's gonna be coming. If I'm not mistaken, just like shipment coming into the game, it's gonna be a mid season thing. But here's the thing, 64 days left on this battle pass at the time of recording means that we're probably not getting any new guns in Modern Warfare 2 for at least a month. Now look, honestly at this point we've had so many games and so many seasons I can't really keep up with things. I don't know if this is pretty typical for how long the seasons have been going. It's not the worst thing to have a battle pass that takes two months to complete because you know people who can't play as much, this kind of system and having it go on for this long is going to be better for the more casual players which is probably exactly why they're doing this. But from the perspective of anyone who bought the vault edition or they bought any kind of tier skips I mean this is probably already done. There's not going to be too much to do here and there's also just not a ton of content for multiplayer in season one. Sure we got shoot house but where's museum like when is that map gonna come back? There has been no communication about when that map is actually coming back into the game and if we go to game setup in private match as well you not only can't access that map but you can't access shoot house either which makes no sense. There was literally a hotfix for this game that just took shoot house out of custom games. There's no reasoning or explanation why you just can't play it. But going back to the M13B you can also no longer cheese this challenge in DMZ. Currently in Modern Warfare 2 if you try to load up in DMZ and get into a vehicle and try to run over the chemist, they are going to EMP the vehicle before you can even get to it. So you have no chance of actually cheesing it. You're going to have to do it the legit way of actually taking down all of the enemies, whether you're shooting them or blowing them up, whatever. I'm sure we have all kinds of different feelings about this because I know a lot of people are upset with the fact that this gun is locked behind a DMZ only challenge. And the only other way to get the gun, as far as I know, is to buy a bundle. I, I don't even know if it's in the store. That's not the M13B. I, I've got to look through all of the bundles now to see if it's being sold. So far, nothing yet. But see, what's kind of funny about this too is that the M13B is actually not that great of an assault rifle, so you're really not missing out a lot if you don't have the gun. But what's actually really crazy is that I've seen two different reactions to this gun being locked behind DMZ. There's some really awesome people in the community that have actually just been, you know, trying to add people as friends, load up into DMZ with them, and drop the gun for free so that way they can have it. Those people are like the saving grace of the community, but there's also another side to it as well. And look, man, I don't have hard evidence that people are necessarily scamming people, but there are people who are actually trying to sell the M13B for like five or ten bucks. I've seen countless people being like, yo, just cash at me like five dollars, I'll add you and I'll drop you the M13B in DMZ. I mean, that's just kind of ridiculous, right? I hope to fucking god that everyone watching this video has not paid for the M13B because they're going to sell it in a bundle. There are ways to get this shitty gun for free. You can do the DMZ challenge. You can add someone who already has the gun and they'll drop it for you for free. You do not have to pay money for this. I don't care who the person is. That just screams scam to me. Like, don't get scammed. We're going back to the OG Modern Warfare 2 days of challenge lobbies. Like, send me a $1,600 Microsoft point card and I will get you a challenge lobby. Please do not get scammed, bro. The gun's not worth it. I've got gold for it. I've used it extensively. It's not that good. But since we're in tier one and we're going for long shots, I wanted to talk about Glint. I saw a video from Exclusive Ace where he was breaking down the different levels of glints depending on whether you're using like a low range zoom or a high range zoom. I just kind of wanted to talk about it because it's a really interesting mechanic that Infinity Ward has kind of expanded on in Modern Warfare 2. I think it would be safe to assume that as you use a higher zoom optic and you get more scope glints that that would be a bad thing, but I don't think that's necessarily the case. Now I think it's only really for like the snipers and maybe like some other guns, but if you see a con that says very large sniper glint, that's not necessarily a bad thing because the glint is literally so strong in Modern Warfare 2 that if you use the scope with like the largest amount of glint possible, people will not be able to see you. It's actually insane. Like you're literally just a walking flashlight. Kind of makes me think of one of the operator mod flashlights in Black Ops 4 that just blinds everyone. 
I can't believe that was a kill. But the reason I wanted to talk about this is because I think this really large sniper glint is kind of broken. It is just my opinion, but I feel like Infinity Ward might have taken it a little too far because you really can't see people who are using it. For the large and very large scope glints in this game, I think Infinity Ward could probably tone it back just a little bit. Because, dude, when you're playing Shoot House, if someone has a big amount of glint and their head glitching the middle, you really can't even see their head. Obviously, your instincts are going to kick in and you're going to shoot at the giant beaming flash of light, but it is kind of weird because you don't really know exactly what you're shooting at. It's just, I don't know. It's a little funky. Now, the next thing I want to talk about, I can kind of understand why Infinity Ward would want to keep it a secret, but I know that Jev is currently doing the challenge in Modern Warfare 2 where you have to get like a thousand kills with each gun to get the weapon charm, the mastery challenge where you have to use certain camos and get a certain amount of kills with each camo in order to get the charm. Man is currently torturing himself by trying to do the weapon charm challenge, but we don't even know if you're going to get anything by getting all of those challenges done for every single gun. There's basically one of two things that could happen. It's either going to have an amazing final camo with a huge payoff, or there will literally be fucking nothing at the end of the tunnel. Jason, I wish you the best of luck. I'm kind of pacing myself at the moment, still working on platinum, so I can't really see that far into the future. But if there is some kind of amazing camo at the end, then yeah, I'll probably try to go for it. But speaking of unlocking camos in Modern Warfare 2, we have to talk about the survivor perk. From the comments that I've seen from you guys, and also just from what I've experienced in the game, we essentially have unofficial confirmation that the survivor perk in this game breaks every single camo challenge. Meaning that if an enemy is using the survivor perk, it doesn't matter what camo challenge you're going for, it is not going to track. Now, I know most players are not going to go out of their way to use survivor because you have way more viable ultimate perks like ghosts and especially quick fix, but it's still a pretty annoying thing to deal with because there's no reason why using the survivor perk should just not track the camo challenges in Modern Warfare 2. But that's just how the game is, and we have no communication from Infinity Ward about why this is the case. And like I've said before, man, there's something that's just so annoying about the survivor perk breaking camo challenges. Like, if you're in the middle of doing the three kill streak challenges for a gun that you don't like or that's hard to use, if someone's using the survivor perk in the middle of that streak, it's not going to track and it's not going to count for your camo. I think point blank kills are also a great example because you would expect that if you knock an enemy into survivor, you'd be able to get close to them and then finish them off with a point blank kill, but it's not going to count. It's just kind of frustrating because this is a bug that's been in the game since launch, but they have not fixed it or addressed it or talked about it. Kind of seems like the only things that get fixed or patched in this game are things that go viral on Twitter when people like share their clips. I think a prime example is the sniper bipod launching glitch. Like that was actually just such a fun and cool thing. And that got fixed, even though it was actually fun and didn't mess up the game. I mean, sure, people are not supposed to be flying around the map with a bipod and a sniper, but I feel like something like that was not degrading the experience of the game. People enjoyed it. It was fun. But the survivor perk ruining camo challenges, I mean, yeah, that's not really doing anything great for the game. But speaking of things that might actually be ruining the game, we have some new movement exploits. Yay. Now, obviously, I did an entire video talking about dolphin hopping and trying to pull it off because that shit was pretty funny. But currently in Modern Warfare 2, we have two new movement exploits. We have the G-Walk, which I think is short for the Gorilla Walk. Because, I mean, just look at this. This is happening right now. There's that, and then slide canceling has returned. Now, as far as it goes for me trying to learn the G-Walk or the slide cancel and trying to pull it off, I don't care. I've already said before that I'm kind of indifferent about these movement techniques. If you want to learn them and figure them out, then you can, but they're probably going to get patched, so just keep that in mind. It's probably a waste of time. This is Modern Warfare 2 that we're talking about. It's Sentinel's Paradise. If you're trying to learn how to move in this game's multiplayer, then you're going to get punished. As a Call of Duty player who has been very anti-Sentinel in the past, I have learned to change my ways. This is a lot more laid back. It's more enjoyable. Look at that. That's a beautiful thing. I don't have to learn how to move. I can just focus on my aiming, get my long shots. I get my camos for doing this too. It's a beautiful thing. Look at these scrubs. Come on. But you know, typically in the past, I have not been a fan of people who spam annoying movement techniques in order to win gunfights. I feel like I just don't really care as much anymore though, especially because camping has become so prevalent in this game. Like if you're going to play Modern Warfare 2 and spam some kind of annoying movement technique that's more aggressive, then I don't really care. Because the meta in this game is to actually just camp and be a sentinel. More often than not, in this game, that's the shit that works. Not trying to fly around the map like a maniac. I mean, most of the Movement King clips that you see, people have terrible accuracy and they're usually not doing that well. And I'm well aware of the fact that this opinion very much differentiates from how I feel about Infinite Warfare, where people exo jumping all over the place was just super annoying. But that's because that specific playstyle just actually looked so annoying and was so annoying to die to over and over again. And just spamming your jump button is significantly easier to do than some of the shit you have to do to slide cancel or G-Walk. You don't even necessarily need a scuff to be someone who just spams jump. Spamming space bar or whatever your jump button is on console is not difficult. So over time, I've tried to learn to not be as mad about it. But speaking of Infinite Warfare, apparently there's a way that you can glitch the supply drop robot bundle into your game. I'm gonna try it after this match. <laughs> There we go. Hey, bro. What the fuck? Come on. Look at this. We got a sentinel standoff. Okay. 
There we go. I don't know if I finished the TAC V. I did, hell yeah. But yeah, now that the game's over, we can try to load in the supply drop robot. In a previous video, I teased some pictures of the supply drop robot bundle along with the supply drop robot charm. Apparently, if you go into a private match and you load in with some bots, there's a chance that one of them might actually be using the skin. I personally haven't tested this up until now. This is gonna be my first time trying it. I think someone sent me this on Twitter though. But yeah, when you can do the CDL glitch, you could also put any kind of charm on your gun. I've got the supply drop robot on my SPX right now. You can see him right there. Okay, let's see. Eh. Nope, no skin there. There's probably way too much luck in RNG that goes into having this actually happen, but yeah. Yep, no skin there. At least I don't think so. Nope. Now this next point is something that I literally just became aware of, but I used to believe that the SPX was the intervention because of the kill feed icon, but it looks like they changed it without even saying anything. I can't be the only one that finds it weird that there's so many things going on with this game that are simply just not being communicated to us. Another prime example of something that got changed was the fact that armor piercing ammo no longer pierces armor. At first when I heard about this nerf, I was really confused because it doesn't really impact multiplayer as much, but apparently the reason that armor piercing ammo got nerfed and it no longer pierces armor is because of Warzone 2 and I guess DMZ, because if you had armor piercing rounds on your guns pre-patch, this would just go right through the armor and just kill people as if they didn't even have plates on. But I also think that Infinity Ward might have gone too far by nerfing it to the point where it doesn't even pierce armor. I mean, what's the point of this ammo type now? Okay, I mean, I guess it still does have the bullet penetration and extra vehicle damage, but this ammo type just completely lost its effectiveness against armored enemies when you're playing against the AI in like Invasion or DMZ. There can sometimes be so many armored enemies and they can be really annoying and difficult to deal with, and now you can't really deal with them them as easily. Yeah, man, I don't know what they're gonna do about that. But speaking of Warzone 2, apparently people are flying around in boats, and there's also, like, this weird one-hit punch kill glitch. It's just insane. I mean, there's so many unexplainable weird things going on with this game. It's so fucking nuts. And look, man, if anyone from Infinity Ward or Activision is potentially coming across this video and they see this, I just want you guys to know that I'm not mad, because some of the shit that's going on in this game is actually just hilarious to me. I do think to some extent that having all of this weird shit going on with the game does actually make it more entertaining. But some of the weird bugs and glitches and things that are just kind of bad for the game, they probably should get fixed and addressed or at least communicate something to us. Tell us what's going on with the game, you know? Like, what do you think about some of the shit that's going on? I think a lot of us in the community would just like to get some kind of feedback back from them. I know they're probably avoiding this because a lot of people just end up saying some stupid shit or they give them some backlash, but me personally, I would like to know what's going on just so I can have some peace of mind and know that the game is going to improve. I think that would give a lot of players confidence that the game is going to improve and get better. I do feel like people tend to get more mad and frustrated more quickly when the devs don't communicate anything. And we just have no clue what's going on with the game and what the state of the game is going to look like. The only kind of communication that we've actually gotten from Infinity Ward as of recently is just patch note updates. I know they have the whole Trello board thing and I've kind of checked it out, but it's not something that I really look at all that much. But if that's the only thing they want to use to try to get their points across, then I mean, you know, I'll check it. Woo! Let's go, Capite. Let's get some long shots. Point relocated. Fuck. Stand by. Get in here hard. Dude, MP5 goes in. Yeah. But I'm definitely curious to hear from you guys. What is something that's been going on with Modern Warfare 2 that just has no explanation that you would like to see Infinity Ward actually address and talk about? Whether it's a patch or a change to the game or some kind of game-breaking glitch or bug, I definitely want to hear from you guys. Every single one of us who plays this game is going to have a different experience and we're going to see different things that others might not actually see or experience. So yeah, that's why I genuinely love hearing what you guys have to say about the game. But with that being said, thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video of me talking about some of the weird stuff going on with Modern Warfare 2. If you guys did enjoy this video and you want Infinity Ward to actually talk more about what's going on with the game, make sure to drop a like. I'll see you guys later. What?